All right, I w I'll try to stay on topic. It's just a, such a nice day right th today, and I did everything. Uh, today, okay, I've been out on the motorcycle today. Check. Day's good vibe, right? Been out on the skateboard today. Check. Good vibe. Played my violin today. Check. Good vibe. Started cleaning the boat today a bit more. Check. Good vibe. Made a couple of videos today and uploaded today. Check. Good vibe. So, everything's good vibes. So, that's why I just kind of ranting and raving now. Okay, so, what I attempted to do in the last video was, what do you do when you don't have any money to get into sailing? So, I, I said crewing, and you could see what happens when you crew um, on a sailboat. You'll find out how much people like you, depending on where you're going to be positioned on the boat. But let's say you don't want to race. You just want to be able to use a couple of weekends out of the year. You want to just put the sails up, go up the river, go down the river, on the lake, off the lake, offshore, wherever it is. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you go to a yacht club, there's going to be probably 500 boats, just like this one. Maybe not exactly like this one, but similar to this one. 26, 28 feet, 30 feet, 22 feet, 24 feet, whatever they're going to be, 25 feet. And they're going to be racer cruisers, there's going to be cruisers, there's going to be cat boats, there's going to be sloops, there's going to be cutters, there's going to be uh, yawls and catches, and all kinds of beautiful, there's even going to be some plastic uh, gaff rig stuff. There's going to be all kinds of boats for there. And people are going to spend a ton of money putting these things in the water. Okay, and the nicer the yacht club, the more it's going to cost them. And they're going to use the boat twice a year. <laughs> twice meaning it could be they showed up at the boat twice just to see if it sunk at the, at the dock, or they actually took it out twice, which that, that's typical. So what a lot of people do is they kind of timeshare their boat. And this has its vines and its vices. For me, I would love to timeshare this boat if somebody was, okay, but you're putting the boat in the water, you're going to pay for all that. Uh, you're going to do all that stuff, and I will not bug you the entire season. I just want one week on the boat. And it'll be during the week. You can have the weekends every weekend on the boat. And they'll see if they like it or whatever. And maybe the, them and three or other couples, they, they fight it out. Okay, well, I want it this weekend. I want it that weekend. Who gets the long weekend? Maybe we'll all share it together, but you, it only sleeps, whatever. But we'll just go out for a day sail. Some people just want to go out day sailing, so maybe they don't need a big boat like this. But say, hey, you know what? It costs, say, four grand to put this boat in the water roughly at the Nepean Yacht, Yachting Club in, in Ottawa. It might be more than that now because that was ten, those were the prices from 10 years ago. And four grand, that also gives you a bit of a buffer zone of in case something goes wrong. But that's all the fees from storage in the yard, moving the boat, launching the boat, hauling the boat out, uh, membership, uh, insurance, everything, probably around four grand. Uh, I'm not saying that to, de again, depending on where you are, some places, one place I was able to put the boat in the water for 350 bucks, but it was on a mooring. Uh, that was, but 350 or 360 bucks for the year, that's nothing. Uh, but it wasn't convenient. And this was, what I'm talking about is a full convenient yacht club. So let's say you get four people or four couples or whatever, four families, and they say, okay, well, we're each going to put in a thousand bucks for the season. Nobody truly owns the boat except for the original owner. But if, you know, it's like something goes on the boat, it's like, okay, well, if you break it, you replace it. Um, if you, you know, want to upgrade the boat, say, okay, well, yeah, but you won't get your money back. Yeah, but let's say this goes on for three, four years where it's, and I, and I know people at the Yacht Club that did that, do this. It's like, okay, I just want to use the boat two weeks out of the year. I'll even pay a quarter of what it costs to operate the boat. But then when something goes wrong, it's your problem, the owner's problem, not yours, right? Uh, unless they, they damage it or, you know, run the boat aground or something like that and have to get it hauled out or whatever. Uh, but you get the idea of what I'm getting at, that it really does have a great advantage there that you're not stuck, locked into monthly payments on, um, uh, you know, uh, doing monthly payments and stuff like that. And you're also not locked into uh, a boat that you may not like. Uh, a lot of times you're going to buy a boat that's sitting on, you know, well... Every boat I've ever bought, this being my second one, you're going to be buying a boat while it's dry docked. And the only experience you're going to have with that boat, okay, is what you read on the internet or guys like me, what we show you or whatever. What you're not going to have is first-hand experience to know if you actually like the boat. So if you could act, it's kind of, think about it, it's like kind of try before you buy, but you're paying for it. Okay. Now other people, what they do is, okay, well, I don't want to do that much. Okay, well, what about renting a boat? There are some people that will rent out their sailboat. There's usually some stipulations with it. And you can rent the boat by the day, by the week, whatever. Uh, you book in advance. 
Uh, there's a lot of little boats between 25, uh, 20 feet, uh, 21, well, 20 feet and right up to uh, basically anything with a cabin on it. So let's say 22 up to 30 feet that you can usually rent. Uh, even on the Ottawa River, a lot of places will have that. And it's better than timeshare. It's just, okay, I want the boat for a week and that's it. So that's another option. Now, let's say you have... Uh, um, uh, a charter, okay, well, you, I'll take you out for a day on the boat for $50 or $60 per person, uh, and you don't have to do anything. You just sit there and enjoy the sale. I'll take you out for uh, maybe $15 an hour, 25 bucks an hour, 30 bucks an hour uh, per person, or maybe a family package for 100 bucks. I'll take you out for the day, or take you out for a couple of hours, or an hour, however you want to do it, and you go around and you sell, sail it, Show people what sailing's about. Heck, you can even uh, teach lessons off your boat. So there is ways to do this. Um, uh, you know, there, so that, that, that's how you can get into it and then see if you even like it. And I know a lot of people would like to do that because, hey, I want to get into sailing, but they know nothing about sailing and they have to learn everything the hard way. And a lot of people give up before they've even tried it, you know. Um, I was lucky enough to work with a guy that knew how to sail well. My very first sailing experience I talked about on my other channel. Um, and it, it turned out to be a bit of a disaster. The very I left port without an engine, and I, I didn't know... I, I'd done all the studying, but I didn't realize that you do mo most of your sailing off the main, right? And where I was. So I just wasn't making any headway, and I ended up kind of grounded and all kinds of stuff. Uh, but the second sail, I had... Um, I guess in a, in, a, in, a, in a nutshell, I had... Uh, uh, my friend at work, well, he basically, uh, he basically, um, said, no, Reg, here, I'll take you out, we'll go out sailing, and we sailed for, like, seven hours, and just seven hours of sailing with somebody who had spent his, uh, you know, grew up, uh, basically over in the UK, and he, you know, sailed in the Baltic, he raced, he did all these things, the, the amount of information, I probably forgot more than he, uh, that, uh, he's probably forgot more <laughs> then I, I learned it. Uh, it's it, like uh, it was just it was a really fantastic experience, and I've been building my skills since then. And then at least if you have you know where to start, it, it's not so bad and it's not so intimidating. A lot of people want to start with dinghies, but a lot of people, or dinghies are a great place to start. But a lot of people want to see what it's like to go to a big boat. They don't want to work their way up on a dinghy and then get out. You know they don't want to take fifty sailing lessons or all summer or whatever. The kids it's fine. A uh, lot lot of lot of clubs will have like kids programs or whatever but if you just want to go out and see because you could be taught to sell get a boat up and going in one afternoon like very easily like uh two hour even an hour of somebody showing you but you really have to have time on the tiller to feel it to see what they're talking about keeping the boat in the wind and, and stuff like that so uh this is just one of the things that i thought was a good topic i don't see anybody else really talking about getting into sailing without buying the boat as much as more of here's what you do when you buy your boat and here's how to buy a boat and i did all that stuff too but i'll just leave this one short this is just a, a quick idea and i'm gonna do a little bit more of a cleanup and then i'm gonna get out of here because it is roasting in here uh even with the front hatch open yeah all right so anyway there we go